what are we up to today? Well, we're on wide angle at the moment on my messy desk. I have this light fitting attached to this mystery piece of wood. Well, there's a few sparkles in here with some mica. Some of you might recognize this kind of stuff as things they use in hospitals a lot. Well, this came out of a military ambulance, one that's sitting on my front lawn. Now, there's a two-part episode about that that you'll probably uh, see. There's two links below. My apprentice has also, as you can probably hear in the background, discovered Minecraft lately. She's getting griefed. Anyway, the uh, it's got a 24-volt system in this ambulance. Now, when we picked it up, they gave us a whole bunch of bits and pieces, including some of the old wooden fixtures, which we're not going to reuse. Um, this is one of the 24 volt light fittings. Now, I want to convert these to LED um, because there's a lot of incandescent globes in there, and I reckon we can economize that 24 volt system. There's a lot more to that system, but we're only going to focus on the light today. So, we need to get this off this board and uh, disassembled so we can see how it's constructed inside. All right, let's get into this with a screwdriver. And remove these three screws first to remove the lens because I hypothesize that it is screwed down from within the holder. All right, there is pretty much what we expected. There's also a loose terminal screw because these have two bulb holders in them. And here's our fixing screws which have corroded a little bit. There is um, two of these light fittings out of six in the roof actually have the second globes fitted to them um, of a much lower wattage and they use them for low power lights. So for or energy saving I guess. And there's a bug shell or skin in here somewhere. It is difficult doing these videos whilst my apprentice is still awake. We may fix that shortly. Alright, that has come off. Let's move everything around. Okay, now we're looking at the foot of this. I have engaged my apprentice audio mitigation device, aka the door. I shut it and um, we can still hear it. So you're going to have to deal with the giggles of my apprentice. Um, now, this is some kind of shell in here. I'm not sure what it is, but it's getting put in the bin. So, this is our light fitting, and it's a pretty standard fitting that takes these little tubular globes. Um, pretty well normal. Now, you can buy very easily um, LED replacements that slot straight into these, but uh, I'm interested in maybe making a whole array that you can fit in there um, of LEDs. And I have standard 5mm LEDs, and I have some Vero boards, so... I could actually probably put two banks in there and have them switched for high and low. Uh, but crucially, this also tells me that I've got a green and a black wire for power. Now, there are three wires that come out of the hole. There's two greens and one black. So, I can pretty well assume that now I know this, I can tell how to wire them up. But polarity might be a problem, but at 24 volts, I've got a fair bit of voltage to spare. So, I can easily put a bridge rectifier in there and then I don't care what the polarity is, it will work. So then, let's see if a piece of Vero board fits in here. All right, I have a whole stack of these um, prefab Vero boards here, and they're gonna fit in there perfectly. I won't even need to trim them down. Now, those are riveted in by the looks. Dare I drill those rivets out? We can pull the wire through, I guess. Mm. All right, I need a flat blade for that. Ah, now that screw that rattled out is the terminal screw that goes in here. Um, it's a copper screw. We'll try and keep them together because they will be handy. Um, but I think I'm going to drill these rivets out and just whack a piece of circuit board in there. I think that will probably do, and that will give us a similar aesthetic. But I'll be able to um, work on these boards. All right, let's find myself a drill. All right, so let's clear a bit of a gap here. All right, and we'll use the 
the old piece of lino here. My GoPro tripod's all in the way. Are you in frame? You are. I get trusty Ryobi here with a drill bit that I hope is the right size. That's just walking off. I was hoping that wouldn't happen. And the vibrations are dragging the camera off. I think we're through. I'll pull that one out in a minute. Get this one. Oh, there's a grab. Oh, that's just ripping plastic apart now. So we can get you out. That one. And this one. Will you come out? Close. There we go. Now, these guys, I think, I might be able to remove them. Um, with my sacrificial cutters. They might just lift out. Close, but almost. You know what? That one's probably not bad. That one can. Yeah, that that'll sit flush. So we don't care. All right. Now, where are we? Let's have a look. That will fit nicely. Um, these little ridges in here will probably stand her off, but that's not the end of the world because once I have solder um, and legs poking through there, that will stand off a little bit too. All right. Let's whack some LEDs in a board. All right, I've been busy here. I've taken a string of three or oh, nine white LEDs and put them in series with two 390 ohm resistors. Normally one 390 would be fine, but we're going with 24 volts, not 12 like I normally do, so it calls for two. Now a series string like this puts the forward bias voltage of a, at about 2.6 volts, when I probably need about three and a half. I don't know if this will work. So, I have my test supply over the back here, dialed up to 24 volts or a little bit higher. I'm gonna take a couple of banana plugs here, plug them in up to the right output, not the wrong one. And we will see if we can light this up. Now, I haven't bothered to check the polarity here, so results may vary. <laughs> And these clips are just a smidgen short to get on the edge of that board. Um, so that might do the job. That'll connect to one of them. Let's give this a quick touch and see if I blow everything up. Oh. No, so let's swap our polarity. Doing this a bit of a hodgepodge fashion. So, yeah, I haven't met the forward bias on that. Apparently. All right, I need to check if I have all of these in the correct orientation and uh, double check a few things. We'll be back. All right, so it looks like I've probably got these in the right polarity, in the right orientation. I am tired right now, but uh, I've got enough current limiting here for that at 24 volts for a brief moment, I should be able to at least touch one. So where's my resistor input? There's my resistor. We'll go there. So we'll work it down the chain till we get them to light up. So we'll work our way down, just gently touching to emit forward bias. All right, so I've gone through a few of them. Let's go back the other way. And then I might verify whether I have voltage. Problem with prototypes, they do silly things sometimes. All right, I'm gonna get my multimeter and verify that these leads are actually working. All right, so I've got some different clips that actually work. So we're, work we're gonna to touch these carefully and just go down until we get below our forward bias. So, got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, so about seven, so it is actually about three and a half volts forward bias we need. So that's about right there, so about, so we've got to take two of them out. That's not the end of the world. 
I think for this, I might short out a couple of select ones halfway through and leave them on the board. Yeah, so I've got to short out two LEDs on that board. Um, and I'll pick a couple in a nice orientation so it sort of works well. So I'll pick two to bypass and uh, we'll be back. All right, one of the advantage of these LEDs is they're so damn cheap. You can afford to just put a couple of extras in. So that's running on both um, both resistors. If we were to bypass one of those resistors and run them a little bit harder and a bit brighter, they do look a little bit better. Let's see if I can hook this in. I need to lift that little wire up a bit so I can get my clip under it. Shove you underneath that. Okay, so that is not too bad. Let's turn our overhead light off and our outlet fan. That is running quite acceptably and it's probably brighter than the one that was already in there. Let's go down to resistor. That is actually noticeably duller. Um, I think I'm going to try it on 390 actually and just run them a little harder. I've got so many of these things I don't mind burning a few out if they run. So yeah I think we'll run them 24 volts with a 390. That should limit the current a bit. So I think we'll be okay. Let's see if we can get this back into the light fitting. All right, now just because I love OFC speaker cable, I have myself a huge roll of the stuff. I'm gonna use a heap of that, or a small piece of. If I can find the right tool for the task, I'd say about that is gonna be suitable for what we're doing. You know, let's give it a little bit more just because we can. Right, do all of this and do this guy and this guy. And then we'll decide what wire we're going to use for negative. I like to use the trace marked wire or the stripey wire. If you okay, well, my GoPro decided to interpret something I said as uh, some sort of shutdown command. So I don't know how much it recorded. So anyway, we're going to repeat this. I am using the white wire or trace wire, if you will, as that, and I have no outlet fan. Let's take my venting fan on. I'm using my trace wire as positive. Um, a lot of the Chinese stuff I get, they use the trace wire as negative. That's not quite ideal. Let's get that out of the way, the soldering iron. So. Let's use our trace wire as positive. Let's stick this down a little bit with Bluetech here. And we will take this wire in here. Solder you on nicely. This one I think I'm going to trim back a little bit to somewhere about there. We'll get a nice inline outlet of cable. And then we'll see if we can stick it all in. I'll do all this nice and professionally, and then I'll end up watching using hot glue. You watch. Um, just one. Okay. I have blue tack in my. Oh, I think my apprentice has been trying to help again. There's blue tack in my automatic wire strippers. Yay. All right. Fortunately, blue tack is not too hard to remove if you know how. Now, let's put that there and that right there. I think if I make a nice little bed of solder along there, she'll go in nicely. All of that. And chuck you in there. Now, I may seem a little more lethargic than my average videos would indicate. And that is partly because I've just come back from three days on the road in a Land Rover. Picking up another Land Rover. One of only 93 of that particular variant. That isn't ideal how I'd hoped it would be. So let's make it ideal. Why not? I accept substandard when we don't have to. Should 
should be about right in that position there. That's better. Still not perfect, but not enough for me to care. Right, there's our light fitting. Let's shove it in the actual fitting or housing, whatever. Terminology escapes me right now. All right, we have here the original housing. That should fit quite nicely in the middle, and I have one LED in the middle to position nice and concentric in order to assist that. Now, I think that standoff in the middle is probably not integral to its strength, but uh, I also cannot be worried for positioning that properly. And I'm going to put the cable out, the original cable hole. And I'm going to put that there. And I think I might use hot glue. Hmm. Before I do that, I'm going to use some blue tack to mock position it. And I'm going to put the filter on and see how this looks first before I decide if I'm going to permanently disfigure this thing. But hot glue, as you may or may not know, is not actually that permanent. It's one of the things I do like about it. Okay, let's put that on and let's get it hooked up to 24 volts. All right, so here's our mock fitting. Let's turn on 24 volts. That looks very nice and diffused. It's still slightly brighter than the original. I think that would work very well, actually. You know what? I'm going to turn off all the light sources in this room and see how well it actually does light it up. We'll be back in a moment. All right, this can be tricky to do with cameras and their exposures, but we still have a fairly good exposure level um, with the light on. Let's turn it off and compare. It seems the GoPro in 4K can't really keep up. You can probably see a blurry picture there, but it does work relatively well. I can see most of what I'm doing. Um, and that, we can use that for minimum running lights. That is a perfectly acceptable level of light, and it's actually about on par with one of these other globes. Let's turn our overhead light back on. Right, let's see what the wattage is on this. Um, if I can, it's a made in Germany, and it is 24 volt, 5 watt globe. So, for 5 watts of incandescent light, I've probably got pretty much the same amount of light here, or something very similar, even with these. Um, I know the mathematicians there are going to probably argue this, but functionally, the amount of light is good. Now, this is why I wanted to keep this filter, this Made in Australia marking on here. Uh, these are Heller Made in Australia. It's a vehicle that was made in Australia from Jaguar Rover Australia for the Australian military. You just don't see that stuff anymore. So I think I'm going to pour some hot glue in there and I can resurrect that fitting if I need to and uh, we might try it out. All right, so I uh, gave this a bit of a clean up with some spray and wipe. There's a couple of scuff marks that I'll probably have to hit with the rag wheel to get out properly, um, but it does look a lot cleaner. Took some contact cleaner and toothbrush and scrubbed some of that uh, rust mark out of the corner there too. Um, the screws don't look great right at the moment, but we will find some better screws for this in the future. But, um, and I'll get some spray and wipe onto the base. We also used the um, infamous hot glue to stick the assembly in on the inside. Um, I will probably buy commercial um, globe replacements for the rest of those fittings because I don't think I want to do this for all of them. Um, and actually, I am not happy with the finish on that. I think I'm going to get some spray and wipe out to the... Uh, the outer ring of this and clean that up properly and then we'll light it up and see how it looks from there. All right it's time to hook these guys up. We don't need outlet fan anymore or extraction fan. We need our positive to our traced wire 
and negative to the other wire. Now, let's um, give this 24 volts. Let's switch you on. So not bad. Um, let's turn our overhead light off again. So that it sort of diffuses in a funny pattern where you kind of expected that, but it's still, the further away you get, the more diffused it is. And from about two meters, which is where it will be going, that will be nice. The next thing we want to do is work out how much current this is pulling. Now I have an analog meter on my power supply, but I think a multi digital multimeter might give us a more accurate uh, expression of that. So let's get the multimeter out. All right, we have our multimeter here and we've selected the 10 amp range. <laughs> and this doesn't even register. Um, so this will be interesting. So I think we need to select, let's try 200 milliamp range. So if I'm reading this right, that's 5.9 milliamps. Uh, let's go 20 milliamp range. <laughs> yep, 5.9 milliamps. Um, let's do a quick, yeah, 6 milliamps. There you go. Let's do a quick bit of maths. All right, I've got a calculator up off screen here for a minute. Let's take uh, my deep cycle batteries that I use, which are about 130 amp hours. Let's go 135 amp hours. Now, um, that is 135 amp hours. Um, and now we need to divide that by milliamps. So divide that by milliamps. Now, one milliamp. Yeah, so it's a thousand milliamps to an amp. So, that should be 0 0.005, no, 005. We'll make it 50 milliamps, no, 05. Okay, that's crazy. So that would run off 135 amp hour deep cycle for 270,000 hours. That is crazy. Even my phone thinks that that's crazy. I'm not even filming on it. So, for this bit, we're going to switch back to our 10 amp setting and we're going to try and run this 5 watt globe through the same circuit. Um, provided, yes, that's correct. So, let's go 10 amp because we will need that. This will certainly register. So now, we are running 220 milliamps. So, 220 milliamps. So, if we go 135 amp hour and we divide that by 220 milliamps, which is 0 0.220, we get 613 hours out of that same thing. But 270,000 hours versus 613, that's a crazy different amount of power. So, um, let's do it a different way. Let's do 220 milliamps divided by six. So we are using 36 times less power for this. I certainly think that will be much better economy um, on the limited battery supply that we will have. Cool. Um, I'm going to see what commercial LEDs are available at super cheap as well and put them in these fittings. But that's about it for this video. This was just a quickie little channel filler uh, because some of you keep asking for these short little interesting videos. And uh, I am the master for making videos that are a bit too long. So let's carry on. And if you want to know about the Land Rover that this came from or the Land Rover Ambulance, um, you can see the two links in the video below. Have fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.